so topic of today is solar cell efficiency so first thing is spectral efficiency it is the efficiency of radiation of a specific wavelength to generate electrical power in a solar cell. So it is the efficiency of radiation of a specific wavelength to generate electrical power in a solar cell. Okay, so solar cell has to be given, so it will have a specific type of a solar cell and it is the efficiency of radiation of a specific wavelength to generate electrical power in that solar cell system. Okay. So, we can also define spectral efficiency eta s as eta s equals to maximum electrical power. that can be generated from an idealized pn junction by incident solar radiation okay. divided by the net light energy incident on that junction okay so the spectral efficiency eta s is the maximum electrical power that can be generated from an idealized pn junction so we are uh, ignoring any other non idealization in the pn junction so we ignoring dark current reverse current and all of those things shunt current and all of those things so an idealized pn junction where we only have the light current okay that is the maximum electrical power that can be generated by the net light energy incident on that junction so we can define eta s then as v gap into i short circuit by g0 into a g0 is the incident solar radiation in watt per meter square a is the solar cell pn junction area v gap is equals to e gap by q is the voltage across the depletion zone and ISC is the ideal short circuit current. So, V gap is the voltage difference across that space charge or depletion zone. ISC is the short circuit current for that idealized PN junction. G0 is the incident solar radiation. A is the cross sectional area on which that solar radiation is incident. So, this is the spectral efficiency. Okay. So, now we can plot this spectral efficiency 
for uh, so the solar spectrum average solar spectrum on earth is known okay so we can plot the spectral efficiency for that solar spectrum uh, with different types of band gap energy e gap okay so we can uh, represent eta s versus e gap this e gap is in electron volts for various semiconductors So different semiconductors will have different band gap energy, so uh, which is also equal to the voltage across the depletion zone. So we can plot this, and this is seen in this figure. So in this figure, as you can see, we are representing the spectral efficiency eta s in percentage and band gap energy, which is written as W delta W g. I am calling it as E gap in electron volts. Okay. So this is the uh, band gap energy in electron volts and this is the spectral efficiency. Now uh, for silicon, the band gap energy is 1.1 electron volts as we discussed, correct. So this is the band gap energy for silicon. This is the two different types of G0 values. Okay, so this, uh, uh, these values are basically uh, the incident solar radiation is somewhat different at different latitudes. So this is the latitude value at uh, uh, probably equator and this is the solar, uh, uh, the incident solar radiation values at, uh, at 45 degree latitude if I remember correctly. Okay. So this is the 45 degree latitude case and this is the equator case. Okay. Uh, we don't have to worry about those things in detail. Basically we standardize the solar incident radiation at a specific latitude and plot the spectral efficiency versus band gap energy for various solar uh, uh, semiconductors for that standardized solar radiation. And for silicon, which is 1.1 electron volt band gap, you can see that the efficiency is the highest point around 48%, 48 to 50%. Okay. And this is what we discussed here, right? This is the usable portion, which is 49% for silicon. The rest are losses. Okay, so that is the that is what you are show, what you are seeing here. For AM zero at the equator, it is somewhat lower. Uh, you have you have around forty three percent of the incident solar radiation that is uh, uh, absorbed. Okay. Uh, there are other uh, solar uh, uh, semiconductors also. So germanium, germanium has a lower efficiency. Uh, its band gap is lower. So a lower band gap means uh, you have more thermalizing losses because you have a lower energy gap. So, uh, electrons can move up early, uh, move up relatively easy, but a lot of the excess energy in the photons is being lost as thermal energy. Okay. Whereas, if you have very high band gaps, then most of it is transmission losses because photons will not have sufficient energy to actually absorb the photons and move to the, uh, to the conduction band. So, this is kind of seen in say cadmium, telluride or amorphous silicon hydrogen uh, things which have band gaps of 1.5 or 1.8 and here also the efficiency starts to drop to around 40 percent, uh, 42 percent, etc. Okay. Uh, so these are all various types of uh, semiconductors, uh, so, so indium, indium phosphide, cadmium telluride, gallium arsenide, these have different band, band gap values but you can see that the uh, all of these range around between 40 to 48 percent depending on the what type of solar uh, incident radiation you are talking about and uh, for all of these uh, you can develop commercially viable solar cells because the spectral efficiency is high enough but of them silicon has the highest spectral efficiency all right however the spectral efficiency is not the final point in uh, looking at the performance of a solar cell in terms of efficiency. There are other things as well. So we will just discuss that uh, and uh, close this class. So we discuss spectral efficiency. Now we will discuss theoretical efficiency. So the theoretical efficiency eta t is the power at the max power point PMP. Remember we had a uh, PMP max power point by G0 into A. So this is the power generated by a solar cell at its 
max power point divided by area into incident solar radiation okay now what is pmp p at max power is the fill factor into the open circuit voltage into short circuit voltage okay so we can replace eta t as fill factor into voc into isc by g0 into a okay now because of thermal energy and other energies voc and v gap are different okay we remember we discussed the voltage factor uh, in the previous class so the voltage factor fv was given by voc by v gap where v gap was e gap by q right so we can write this as fill factor into voltage factor into v gap into isc by q which becomes fill factor into voltage factor into spectral efficiency okay so what we get then is that this theoretical efficiency is equals to fill factor of your solar cell into voltage factor of your solar cell into the spectral efficiency of your solar cell right so spectral efficiency is not the only thing you also have to look at the fill factor which is how the maximum power point is compared to the idealized case of a uh, uh, constant current source that is voc into isc and then how the open circuit voltage is uh, related to the uh, uh, the vo voltage barrier across the space charge region okay. there also the open circuit voltage is lower than the voltage barrier across the space charge region because thermal energy etc also provides an additional energy which decreases the open circuit voltage below the uh, voltage barrier across the space charge region okay. so if you look into all of these together then this is the theoretical efficiency curve okay again am0 and am1.5 and now you can see that the theoretical efficiency curve has shifted to these solar cells as being the highest near 30 percent silicon is still good around 28 percent but indium phosphide cadmium telluride gallium arsenide etc uh, these ones are, are having the highest theoretical efficiency of around 30 percent okay because these are higher band gap energies th they are less impacted by thermal energy driven uh, electron flow that is the diode current and you, hence their VOCs are closer to their V gap values. Okay. Hence, their voltage factors are higher than the silicon voltage factor. And you can see this impact for germanium e extensively. While the spectral efficiency of germanium is around 40%, because it has such small voltages, right? the thermal energy is sufficient to create a large diode current and hence its VOC is much lower than V gap. And as a result, it has a very low voltage factor and your germanium efficiency goes to 12% just, the theoretical efficiency. Silicon does not suffer as much. Okay. However, as you can see, uh, you, are, you are getting a slightly skewed distribution and you are getting maximum efficiencies for band gaps of around 1.4 electron volts rather than 1.1 electron volt for silicon. Still, uh, silicon has reasonably good efficiencies of around 28% for AM 1.5 radiation and 26% for AM, uh, AM 0 radiation. Whereas, you, you, you can reach 26-27% uh, for AM 0 and 30% for AM 1.5 using this in indium phosphate, gallium arsenide and cadmium telluride kind of system. So what does this mean? So this means that for your 
max efficiency for solar cells single junction we will discuss multiple junction solar cells later is less than 30 percent this one here okay for silicon max efficiency is of the order of 26 to 28 percent correct of course again, uh, we will have other types of losses so actual realizable efficiency is around 20 percent 22 percent etc so if you think of this solar cells even though it converts uh, solar energy into electricity directly because of all these losses the efficiency values are significantly low so if you think of a traditional engineering gas turbine systems or ic engine systems you get 35 40 percent efficiencies easily and for large scale gas turbines you can get 70 percent efficiencies also quite easily okay even for wind turbines, you will get higher efficiencies than this. Okay, so solar cells usually work at lower efficiencies. Uh, however, uh, the point here to note is, unlike say uh, conventional energy systems, the actual source is free. So sunlight has no pricing, right? Unlike unlike pet crude oil or coal or everything. So efficiency. Yes, efficiency matters because you need a certain density of electrical output. So, you will have to build bigger areas of solar farms to get sufficient energy. Uh, but in terms of cost of the original raw resource, there is no cost. Okay, That is why uh, renewable energy systems can still be economical at lower efficiency values like this. Okay. It will not be economical at 5%, 10% efficiencies. But 20% efficiency is 18% efficiency, we get good value for uh, power. And as you can see, in the levelized cost of electricity of solar cells are even uh, sometimes lower than fossil fuel resources. So today we will stop here. Uh, in the next class, that is going to be the next week, we will have the final lecture on solar cell and where we will look into the other types of losses that exist. So we only discussed about losses due to uh, non-idealization in the power voltage characteristic, dark current losses and losses due to thermalization and transmission losses due to the broadband nature of the solar radiation itself. But there are other material related losses as well and we will also discuss how to minimize them and secondly how multi-junction solar cells can improve the efficiencies from the single junction value though at a which comes at a higher capital cost. So we will discuss those and finish our discussion of uh, solar energy. So thank you for listening and uh, uh, we will see you in the next class. Thank you.